Southern Cal contacted no. you or your agent? No. No. Okay. No. no. North Texas. State. State. State, the armadillos or whatever. They got no. everybody back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it a distraction though? When? Yeah, just keep asking questions. Like I guess the press conference will be over quicker. Yeah. No. I mean, no. Well, that's, what do we want to talk about? Let's talk about another college. No. I mean, you got ten minutes, so let's talk about North Texas. I know you have an obligation, and I understand it. It's going to happen. We're not successful, and we're not winning. I came from college. I'm going to go back to college. So. I hope someday to be like Coach Coughlin and win enough games where I can stay around long enough where that speculation ends. But I understand you have to ask the question. Chip doesn't play. Chip Kelly squashing any rumors that he could leave the Eagles to return to the college circuit. But here is the question, Skip. Do you believe Stephen him? Stephen A. Well, okay. I want to hear Stephen A. All right, yeah. Stephen A. I apologize. Yeah, do, you, right. do you believe Chip here? Oh, I believe he's telling the truth. I just believe that things can change rapidly. Um, even at 10 and 6, if you miss the playoffs, particularly in Philadelphia, life is not going to be made to be very comfortable for you. That's number one. Number two, you see he has a very dismissive and aloof attitude, which is something we've lamented in the past. No need to revisit that. He is 10 and 6 in his first two seasons. That's 20 and 12 overall. You know, in his first two seasons, made the playoffs one year, didn't make it the next year. But if you're in Philadelphia and you're not making the playoffs, it doesn't matter what your record is. It doesn't matter the fact that you have double-digit victories. You're not going to get the same level of latitude that Tom Coughlin has in New Jersey, which is in 2013, what Chip Kelly alluded to when he talked about how he wanted to be that kind of guy that had that level of longevity. The level of patience that the Mara family, along with Mr. Tish and the Giants organization, have showed Tom Coughlin. I can assure you, Chip Kelly is not going to get that kind of latitude in Philadelphia. They would need to be in a postseason. They would need to be a relevant franchise in that regard in order for him to enjoy any degree of longevity. And now that he has control in Philadelphia, I think it's easy to see, Skip, and I think it's easy to surmise, and you're not stepping out of bounds here, by acknowledging he's somebody that likes to be in control. He wants control. Yeah. We all know that. Most coaches do. We respect that. But most don't get it. Jeffrey Lurie has given Chip Kelly the control that Chip Kelly wants. So I don't believe for one second that he has any interest. I think he's telling the absolute truth. There's no interest in USC with its 11 national titles. There's no interest in Texas with its nine national titles and its own television network. And the money would be big time. And of course, he'd have control. There's no interest there, but that's only because He's still in the NFL in Philadelphia where he's won his share of games, not to mention the fact that he has control. If he were to lose control, would he ultimately decide to go back to college? I think that is very possible. It's not relevant now because obviously he's in control in Philadelphia and he has the support of Jeffrey Lurie. But come back and ask me that question about Chip Kelly again if the Philadelphia Eagles are losing and he either finds himself losing control or out of an NFL job. Then come talk to me because I want to hear him say that then. I'm with you on this. And by the way, before I answer Molly's question, I need to defend the honor of North Texas because Chip made a disparaging remark about the North Texas State armadillos. It's the North Texas Mean Green. I think mm. once upon a time they used to be the Eagles, if I can recall, because I've actually attended a football and a basketball game oh, at North Texas in Denton, Texas. <laughs> and it's a beautiful yeah. little campus, and it's a good school, and they didn't deserve it. And I got your back, North Texas. Yeah, Mean Green. Yeah, way to go, Mean Green. It's, yes. a, it's, a it's, a, it's a beautiful little campus. It's a good school. It is. But Chip Kelly certainly wasn't trying to come across as an aficionado on that. He was basically highlighting what we all know, and that is, other than the Skip Baylesses of the world, who the hell knows who those folks are? Well, they're not the armadillos. I think a lot of people in Texas know who they are, but, but that's right, beside right. the point. I don't, okay. I don't think we care, but go ahead. Okay, well, I care, so I said it. A lot of my people care, so it, here's the point. <laughs> okay. Chip Kelly, I, I hate to admit this publicly, but, but Chip Kelly is a good football coach. I don't love the guy, and, and I don't think you love the guy for a lot of other reasons. I don't like the way he carries himself, the way he handles himself, the way he operates, some of the personnel moves he's made, how he made them, why he made them. We both had lots of issues with Chip Kelly. But what I can't take away from Chip Kelly in the National Football League is Stephen A. Smith, his first year 
in pro football. He went 10 and 6 and made the playoffs, and they lost a home playoff game to the Aints, who were obviously the Saints at that point. Last year, he went 10 and 6, but he was after they obliterated my Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving evening at Jerry World. They were 9 and 3, and then predictably, their backup quarterback, Mark Sanchez, fell apart, as I warned you that he would. But that's pretty good. 10 and 6 to 10 and 6, though the second one didn't make the playoffs, that's still a pretty good start in pro football. Now, I'm with you. He belongs in college football because he wants more control than pro football will, will ultimately, I think, afford him over the long haul. He's going to have a harder and harder time of, of attracting free agents because DeMarco was a special case because he was a little sideways with Jerry Jones, and it was the perfect signing for Chip Kelly to say, I will overpay you, DeMarco, to leave Dallas and come to Philadelphia. I get that part. DeMarco's pride was rubbed raw by Jerry Jones, so that was a special case. But in this case, he belongs in college football, and I think he will wind up there sooner than later because his stuff works better in college football. The way he is works better. It's his way or the highway. We know that. And he wants more coachable cogs, and that's what college kids more often are. And I don't think college defensive coordinators can prepare for him as quickly as NFL coordinators can, that fast break offense of his where they're trying to run 75 plays in an NFL game. It's just it, it's easier to prep for in pro football. You have a little more time and you have a little more wisdom and experience to prep for it. I think Chip Kelly could dominate college football. I think he'd be great at USC. He doesn't fit in persona as a Hollywood kind of guy, but he runs a Hollywood offense, and, and if he went out and started lighting it up, and they started scoring 70 a game and winning, obviously, Pac-12 games, championships, competing for national championships, he'd turn into an L.A. kind of guy pretty quickly, I would think. So, to me, he well, belongs there, and you? he's probably bound for college football. Can, you know what, listen, I, once again, let's reiterate. We believe what Chip Kelly is saying. He obviously is, has no interest in USC or Texas at this particular juncture. He's in the NFL, not college football. We all know that the NFL is king. Not only is he a head coach, he's the man in charge. He's been allowed to give the Eagles a facelift. They got like 12 different players this year compared to what they had last year. Went out and gave Maxwell about $61 million. Got rid of LaShawn McCoy. Got rid of Deshaun Jackson a couple of years earlier. Got Let Jeremy Macklin get away Yep. Kansas City, Trent Cole is gone, Harriman's is gone, Mathis is gone. We know all of this, okay? So the 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 power that he has will lead itself, will lend itself towards recognizing this guy doesn't want to leave the NFL. But let me ask you this question, Skip. Based on what you see from Chip Kelly, the news, the Pat, the the, the Riley Cooper handling. The news, LaShawn McCoy and others and what they said about him, the aloofness, the dismissiveness that he exudes yep. during press conferences and beyond. Maybe it didn't occur when he was at Oregon. How easy do you think it would be for Chip Kelly to go in the kids' living room and recruit them for college programs after what we've seen over the last year or two? Just a question. I don't know. Maybe you could answer that better than I could. Uh, what, what's your take on it? Well, I guess what uh, my take on it is that I don't blame him for wanting to be interested in the pros because there's only 32 of those jobs, okay? And, you know, guys are going to want to play for somewhere because there's only 32 teams. They don't give a damn who it's for. These are professionals. They're getting paid. They want their money. Mm -hmm. They want to elevate their quality of life, yep. and they want to do so by playing on an exceptionally high level in the National Football League. College, however, is an entirely different scenario altogether. There are a multitude of programs and institutions that you can go to where there isn't a Chip Kelly, and you don't have to deal with him hmm. or anybody like him. There are plenty of parents and plenty of kids who choose a school, obviously based on the coach. Hmm. And it ain't just about success or failure. It's about the rapport that you are capable of developing with those kids. That plays a very significant role in deciding what institution of higher learning you are going to end up going to. The NFL is different. Chip Kelly doesn't have to recruit. He's a boss. He could be the biggest whatever that you can find, all right? Guys are still going to come play for him because it's the NFL. 
That is not the case in college. Okay. And we don't know. Um, we, we didn't know as much about him personality-wise yeah. at Oregon okay. as much as we know about him now okay. in Philly. Forgive me for bringing this up if this is not where you're heading, but are we talking about a white coach who faced a racial issue in his locker room in Philadelphia going now back to college to recruit? I'm talking about the combination. Of, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it all. I'm talking about it all. I'm talking about, you remember how you and I both lamented how he handled it uh, when they asked him me, questions me and he refused you. to yes. address stuff, how dismissive he was? Yes. That's, that's right. How, how, how much it put people off. So I'm not really talking about, quote, unquote, the racial dynamic. I'm talking about the personality that you have, how aloof and dismissive yeah. you were, how insensitive you came across, all of those different things. With a professional organization like the NFL, you don't have to worry about those things. But as a college coach, now that that's been front and center, when you walk into somebody's living room, their friends, their family members, their parents, I, I guardians, all of these people are present, it's an entirely different thing. Okay, it's an entirely there's, different thing. There's one mitigating factor here. If he walks into the living room and says, Come yep. play for me at, let's say, USC. We'll score 70 a game. You're, you're going to have a whole lot of yards, passing it, throwing it, catching it, whatever it is, right? You, you could promise a kid, That's come true. here, That's and true. you are going to shine for me, right? Yeah, until you get on my nerves or I find somebody <laughs> better. Yeah, yeah. So all talk. of this other stuff okay. that, he's very, that, he, that he's very much capable of. Yep. And then not only that, you got to remember, you, 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 other programs don't have to promise that. Like Nick Saban says, you see, we want to win. You want to win? Because we're going to win here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It depends. Okay. It depends. My All I'm saying is, is that it's tricky. I'm not saying he won't get it done. I got it. I'm not saying he won't be successful. I'm it. just yeah. saying it's tricky. No question. Monday Night Football, Giants at Eagles. Philly is favored by four. I don't know if I'm going to watch that game. We'll see.